Good evening and welcome to the Info Grammar School Sixth Form Information Evening. I'm really pleased to welcome you to our virtual event. I think it's really important that we're able to communicate and, and have this, especially in our current times. Uh, I hope to be able to give you lots of information which will be useful and will help you as you make your decision about the Sixth Form and about courses uh, that are on offer. Throughout this presentation tonight, I'm going to talk about who the sixth form is and, and how we got on last year. I will also talk to you about some of the, the key features of our sixth form and talk to you about the application process. If at any time during this presentation you have any questions, please feel free to ask them straight away. Mr Birkin is online and can answer questions uh, if you just use the chat box. If it's a private message or private question relating to your child, please ensure that you make the message private, uh, otherwise you can send to all. If you are not watching this presentation live, I'm sorry, uh, but we won't be able to answer the questions in the chat box and email the school in the normal way and we will get back to you. So let me introduce myself first. So my name is David Ragg. I'm assistant head teacher and I'm the head of sixth form. And I joined the school in April this year. So it's been a very strange time uh, to join the school, as you, you will understand. The head of year 12 for next year will be Mr. Birkin. And many of your sons will know Mr. Birkin, who is one of our business teachers uh, and has been at the school for a long, long time. I'd also like to introduce you to Mrs. Jeffrey. Uh, Mrs. Jeffrey is someone who... Uh, works very closely for the sixth form. She's our attendance and our sixth form administrator, but actually she's far more than that. She is the mum and the glue that holds us all together. Our emails are on the screen. Again, if you want to ask questions, please feel free to contact us. So what are we about? Basically, as a sixth form, we are making really massive strides to ensure that we provide the best opportunity, opportunities for your children, for your sons. And our vision, I think, really is straightforward. We want to inspire, challenge, but also support every student so they can raise, achieve and exceed their personal and academic aspirations. And we want to do that every day. We fully support our school motto, which as much as I can, Tang Kushi Pui. And it's really important to us that every day we make those strides. So thinking about last year and the year 13, it was a very strange year, as you will know and you have seen in the media. Unfortunately, our year 13s were not able to take exams and we relied on centre assessed grades. The fantastic news is, is that our boys did really well. Their hard work, their dedication and their studious nature paid off and they were aptly rewarded. 27% of all grades were A or A star, which is an absolutely fantastic achievement. And 55% were all A star to Bs. Again, you, over half the grades at grade B or above. Our average point grade increased and also our attainment grade too. One of the key things that did improve last year and has been improving over a number of years, as the graph at the bottom will show, is something that we call value added. And value added is the amount of progress a student makes in comparison to their GCSEs. And on average, every student last year made half a grade more progress in every one of their subjects compared to what their GCSE grades. What a, an absolute wonderful progress and is testament to their hard work, but also the teaching and the support that they received at grammar. So the results were great, but what does it mean? Effectively, it means that 91% of our boys managed to get into a university of their choice. Out of those who went to university, 26 went to Russell Group, institutions which are, quite frankly, the best universities in our country and probably some of the best in the world. Uh, but over 80% of all students went to what we class as good universities. So they've been rated good in other ways. That's a fantastic achievement, uh, considering we are a comprehensive school. In addition to university, we had 5% who studied for an apprenticeship and have gone on to do degree level or high level apprenticeships. 
and we have a small handful of boys, about 4%, who've taken a gap year this year. And I think, to be honest, we can probably understand why, given the COVID and given the restrictions that they've had. Put that actually on paper and to give you an indication, uh, what I've got on the screen at the bottom is just selection of our students who achieved all A stars. I've, I've taken the names off, so I can't share those with you. But what I can share is the courses and the institutions they went on to study at. So we had one student who achieved four A stars. He's at Warwick now and he's studying law. We have a number who've got two or three A stars and they're studying a variety of courses at different universities. So that's how our students got on. We're incredibly proud of the achievement that they made. And I think the hard work of them, of their teachers, really pays off. And I think the key, and it's one of the differences we'll talk about later, is this is hard work over the two years of their A-level courses. We really wish them well. And as they leave us, we are confident that they will succeed and do exceptionally well in the rest of their educational journey, but also in their future careers. And we're looking forward to seeing them back in our old boys' dinners uh, and hearing exactly how they're getting on. So this brings us to the end of what I've called Act 1. And this is the time where I'm going to pause and I'm going to give you the opportunity to ask questions. I'm literally just going to, to pause myself uh, and then I will come back in a moment and answer any questions that you have. Hello and welcome back and hopefully we've been able to answer some of your questions. Uh, please, all the way through the presentation, uh, don't wait till we pause. Please just send a question and we'll answer it as soon as we can. So I suppose the big question is, is why choose Enfield Grammar 6 form uh, for those students who aren't currently out of school? Enfield Grammar School is known in the community as, as grammar. So if I refer to it as grammar, you'll understand what that means. Now, I believe a successful sixth form is based on some really clear success mechanisms. And for me, that's our provision. It's how we enrich our students. It's the environment that we provide. And probably most importantly, it's our relationships with our students. It's how we nurture and we develop our young people. So let me just break those down just a little bit for you. I'm going to start off by talking about our outstanding provision and I've called this outstanding I make no uh, claim that this is an Ofsted outstanding grade but it's certainly from my experience within other schools I think we are offer an absolute wonderful provision we have a, a huge range of courses and our post-16 courses are, are delivered by specialist teachers and there is a vast array we have a, a really strong partnership with Enfield County, and that gives us the opportunity to offer a, an even larger array of courses. So uh, our boys are able to study at the girls' school and equally the girls are welcome to come and study courses at our school. And we refer to those students as collegiates. We have some fantastic pathways at post-16 now, which you're experiencing, but also at post-18. I think a real strength of our provision is our post-18 support. The way that we support through UCAS, the way that we sort through pension applications, our trips, our visits, uh, and quite frankly, everything we do to enable our young people, our young men to succeed when they leave school. We do have a designated UCAS and career support staff, and these are specialist staff who it is their sole job to support with UCAS and careers. One of the things that we have is something called our progression hour. And it's where we incorporate lots of the life skills and lots of the revision and study skills that's often missed in a sixth form. Part of our progression now is something that we call VESPA. And I'll talk about that slightly more in a small time. Uh, and we offer everything that you'd expect in terms of tutors, assemblies and, and extended mentoring and tutoring. But also we, we offer the extended project qualification, which I think most schools do now. But it's something that's really important to us. And we have a dedica dedicated sixth form attendance manager, and that's Mrs. Jeffrey, uh, who you'll get to know well over the next couple of years. So let's just think about 
what we offer and our provision and where it takes us. And this is just a, a graphic really just to help us visualize it. So as we enter the school, uh, you have a choice. Obviously you don't have to come to Infield Grammar 6th form. We, we hope you decide to come and we would welcome you if you're able to succeed in the courses. The most important thing for us is that you're on the right course, and that you're able to do well. So as you come in, into us, you have the choice of a level, level two course, an A-level course, or level three vocational courses. And from there, they open up a vast array of opportunities. We can link A-level courses and level three vocational courses. Uh, they lead on to apprenticeships or to gap years, to degrees, uh, to university, to employment, which again leads on to postgraduate study. We really are just the first links in the career chain as you move on for the rest of your learning. I mentioned VESPA, and VESPA is a, an acronym for the A-Level Mindset, Vision, Effort, Systems, Practice and Attitude. And it's something that we believe supports our young men to be better learners and as better learners to achieve more. We really think about the systems of learning and how we can really support that to our A-Level Mindset. I'm going to quickly talk about our enrichment programme. And I think the enrichment is one of the key features, again, of Enfield Grammar School. And I've badged our enrichment program, it's called the Culture Club. And it, it's not a throwback to an 80s pop band. Uh, it is something where we focus on enriching the life chances of our boys. And that's through trips, it's through visits, through sports, through just a different point of view. It's through charity work, through book clubs. We have a huge range of sports and music, and as you know, throughout our school, we have sports and music scholars. Uh, but more than that, we have some really clear student leadership opportunities. I hope you manage to see our sixth form video and you'll see some of our student leaders in action. And they are truly impressive young men. We really work hard on charities and we try very, very, really hard, actually. I don't actually think that's a word. We try really hard. Uh, to be part of our community. We're proud that we've been in existence uh, since the 1500s and for us the only way we have survived is to be part of the infield fabric and we want to continue that. We have a vast array of trips and visits, we have opportunities for our boys to be uh, mentors in primary schools and we have a huge range of guest speakers that come into school. Our alumni is second to none uh, specifically in the area, uh, but actually our reputation goes far beyond Enfield and we are very fortunate to, to receive a number of, of guest speakers who want to come and speak to our, our students. We also have extensive opportunities for volunteering. As well as the enrichment programmes, and these are informal programmes, we have things like the Duke of Edinburgh's, which are hugely popular uh, and really worthwhile. And I would recommend that all students consider something like the D of E to really help them as they start thinking about UCAS. So I've talked about our provision, I've talked about our enrichment, and I think just to, I'd like to mention our environment. And the sixth form environment is very different uh, to life in, in Key Stage 3 and, and Key Stage 4 in that we have our designated space. We have a space which is for sixth formers only, and only six formers are able to access these areas. It means that we can be a little bit more mature, we can uh, have some more grown-up behaviour, but also that we have some different things that we can offer. So now we're designated house, we've got study rooms, we've got com computers, we've got areas for relaxation, uh, and we have teaching rooms. If you know this school at all, you will know that we have some amazing sports facilities. Uh, our fields are second to none in the area, and our 4G Astro uh, is absolutely uh, a feat to behold. We do have fan plans to further improve our facilities this year, and that would be, hopefully, some significant refurbishment to our house and also to some other areas within the school. That can only benefit our young men and your sons. We constantly review our attire, and currently we have a uniform 
that we were and we encourage. And I think you'll probably agree that we are one of the smartest, best turned out uh, group of young men in the area. Certainly, our young men stand out in the community as being ambassadors for our school, but also for being smart, intelligent and academic. Because of, of all this environment, we have some really clear professional expectations. We want our young men to behave like young men. We want them to take the responsibility and to be their role models for our students in the school and to develop that independent learning, the, the skills that will allow them to go on to university or to work and be really, really successful. And it's fantastic seeing the difference from when they arrive to when they leave, that journey of maturing and taking on the responsibility and the expectations. It truly is an honour to see. Uh, and it's it's even more amazing when our young men come back to us to say, we did this and we thank you. And, uh, I'm new to the school, but I, I've seen and witnessed and been part of that already. And it's absolutely fantastic. I think one of the things that really sets us apart is our outstanding relationships. And uh, one of our tutors said that we were established in 1558, but were nurtured daily. Uh, and I think like a good wine, we have matured, uh, but I think we are absolutely outstanding in the way that we manage and we treat our boys. We have a really clear emphasis and ethos of teamwork in the sixth form, and that goes across all areas. That doesn't mean we don't have high expectations. We do have high expectations and we challenge, but actually those challenges are supported by thinking about the well-being of our young people. Students' opinions are really important to me and to us in the sixth form, and it's really important that students have a voice and they are able to di dictate some of the direction, uh, and they are within the sixth form. We work closely with school, with school and home, uh, so that we can make sure that your children receive the best possible outcomes as they move forward. And finally, I think it's one of the areas that we tend to forget as our young, young men become to the sixth form, but we take safeguarding very, very seriously. It's something that we work with our young men to, to ensure that they know how to keep themselves safe and, and they know how they can help protect others. And the safeguarding is something that's, that's really vital to us. So all that means is our support mechanisms and our mechanisms for success. It means that in the sixth form, we really do encourage our young men to give as much as I can to work hard, to have really high expectations. And I will never apologise uh, to you or to any student for having high expectations uh, because that way we can be mega successful and we can ensure that we achieve and aspire to be the very best teacher of our young men can be. I mentioned earlier that our sixth form was set the standard for low school students. That's something that, that I take really seriously. I hope that our students enjoy learning and get the most out of every lessons uh, and I'm confident, certainly from looking at the outcomes and from speaking to our young men, that that's the case. We expect, obviously, that all of our students make that choice and follow the rules and give their best to us. And I think as much as I can is, is a good way to think about that. I'm going to take a pause again there. And this is the end of, I suppose, why you should join us and why we want to join you why we want you to join us. It's really important that, that you are able to come and speak to us and ask any questions. So I'll pause just for a moment. Please ask any questions again in the direct chat and I will answer them by the chat or Mr. Burke and Will as we move on. And um, welcome back. So, I've told you how we get on and I've told you a little bit about our six and why I think we're great. Uh, how can you join us? Well, the process starts tonight. So we have a really clear application timeline. We have uh, this information that's available tonight. We have a video online and I spoke to all of the grammar students in an assembly yesterday. Again, that information is online. So if it was missed for any reason, feel free to go back and catch up. Our application form is also live online and you can follow the links from the sixth form section on the school website and our application deadline is the 29th of January. 
all applications are online. That's for internal and external students. And I hope that you are able to fill that. Once we've got the applications in, we'll review them and we'll make offers and we'll meet with all students. And by March, April, you should have a conditional offer based on your results in the summer. In addition to the application form, we have a significant transition period and that takes place in July. We have a number of uh, induction days, which we look forward to. The results day this year for the first time ever is on a Friday. Uh, and this is because of the changes to COVID because the exams are pushed back slightly. So the results day is the 25th of August, 2021. And that's the day where we will confirm courses. Just so you don't worry about it, it's a question that someone always asks me, is that change of courses aren't set in stone until the results day. And then we can make those final decisions. I spoke to the boys yesterday about how to decide on a course. And this is probably one of the most difficult aspects of, of moving to a sixth form. So really think about what you enjoy, what you're good at, which subjects to combine, how to think about employers, think about the new courses, the new content, and also think about facilitating facilitating subjects. I've put a significant amount of information online about how to decide which post-16 courses, and I hope you'll find that useful. It will go into each one of the areas that I've just mentioned in a little bit more depth. Again, please speak to teachers and seek advice where you are unsure. So when we think about course selection, it's really about getting the right balance. It's about thinking about what career I might want to do and what fits. Look at the UCAS website and which also have a website, both are linked from my sixth form website. And it's really important that you're able to keep everything going and make an informed decision. Think about what you're likely to achieve. For A-levels, we require sixes, uh, some sevens uh, for, for maths, and it's also recommended for sciences. Uh, and you must get your fives in English and maths. When we start thinking about our course selection, please have a look at the subject overviews. These are on our website. They're linked and they've got a uniform set of information. And there's also a code, a QR code, where you can scan to get the specification. It's really important. If you've got any questions, talk to the teacher or email the teachers listed on the pages given. And look at that in comparison with our entry requirements. If you want an overview of the entry requirements, that's available. But the entry for each course is on the bottom of each of the subject overview, so you can get a really clear idea. When you start thinking about what courses to, to choose, we base this on option blocks. These option blocks are draft, they're subject to change, but this will just give you a really good idea about what may or may not go together. Effectively, you need to select three subjects, one from each from, sorry, you need to select three subjects from three different option blocks. You do not have to select one from each, just three in total. The subjects will be different unless you choose the level two courses or the BTEC level three business courses. These are draft and it may change depending on demand. And obviously we can't guarantee that we will run courses where there isn't sufficient demand because that's not viable for us to continue. Again, I, I re-emphasize again that being on the right course is the most important thing and it's vital. So take your time when choosing. Use all of the sources of information that I've given, but also ones that you know rely on family, friends and seek advice. When you do complete our online application form, and again, this is linked on the website, ensure that you've got all of the information that you will need to hand. So you will need your contact information, your emails, external students will need the UCIs, UPNs and UCNs. And that's a barrage of three letter abbreviations, but unique candidate uh, number, unique pupil number, and the unique candidate identifier are important for you to submit your application. If you can't find it, submit the application and we can try and find it later. If you're applying from Enfield Grammar School, please use your school email in the student email section. 
and that's brought us to the end of the information evening. I've thrown a huge amount of information at you and I've directed you to a significant amount that's not in this presentation. I'm going to stay online now. I'm going to pause my video uh, and go back to the questions. And please feel free to ask any questions. When you're satisfied that you've answered the questions, please feel free uh, to leave. I look forward to meeting you in person in the near future, and I look forward to welcoming your sons to Enfield Grammar 6-4. Have a good evening.